Last night I sat with uh, Al Rantel and Doug McIntyre as we analyzed the election returns, and I discovered to my horror that uh, they both voted for Barack Obama. And we had a couple of uh, very heated exchanges as to why. And I was uh, going over some of the highlights earlier in the show, and Doug McIntyre called and so told uh, my producer, the legendary Leslie Genghis Siegel, that I had mischaracterized his position. Well, we don't want to do that. So uh, Doug is now joining us. Doug, thank you for calling. I appreciate it. Sage, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. I just wanted to clarify something. We were talking about, uh, well, socialized medicine, essentially. And, uh, and you mentioned my brother. We, this came up last night that my brother has a medical condition. That was it your, your brother? I thought you said brother-in-law. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's my brother. Okay. And uh, I, I just want to make it clear. The, the reason we arrived at the conversation we had is not because... I believe that health care is a right. I believe health care is a, is a, is a commodity uh, that people have an obligation to purchase like anything else. Uh, but the conversation was, why would people vote for Obama? That's how we got there. And the point I was making is that in the six years that the Republican Party, my party, had uh, control of the House and the Senate and the White House, they did not address the issue with free market principles. Because I agree with you, Larry. I think everybody is represented in Congress on health care except the consumer. I think that the uh, trial lawyers and the AMA and the pharmaceutical industry and every uh, HMOs, every possible uh, uh, lobbying group that has a stake in this is represented except the actual consumers of, uh, of medicine. But the Republicans, while they pay lip service to, to free market principles, did not do anything about it. So with that, uh, as people's personal finances are literally being destroyed by the cost of health care, if an Obama comes along and says, well, I'll give you the crumbs off the table, people will accept it because it's more than they got from the Republicans. No, no, that, no, was Doug, my, that was my only point. Okay, well, Doug, I, let's have a fresh conversation then. Okay. I, I get what you're saying. Your, your analysis is why would people vote for Barack Obama? Uh, fine. Why would Doug McIntyre vote for Barack Obama? That's what I want to know. Well, uh, you know, okay, that's a, that's a broader point than the specific point about health care. Okay, I, I, and it's real simple, and you're not going to agree with it, and that's fine. Uh, but I, I, I voted for Barack Obama because, to me, uh, voting for a third-party candidate or abstaining from the vote when the nation is being asked to make a choice between these two men uh, is a dodge, especially for someone who's in the opinion business. We're, we're, we're in the opinion business all day long. We're asking people their opinions, and for me to sit the election out when the nation is making a choice between Barack Obama and John McCain is a dodge. Uh, I did that in 2004, and it didn't feel particularly good. I didn't vote for George Bush or John Kerry. I found both candidates to be unpalatable, and I voted for a third-party candidate. Oh, okay, so Doug... And I didn't want to do it a second. Okay, time. Doug, uh, you, you believe in free markets. As between McCain or Obama... Who is closer to the free market principles that you believe in? Well, certainly McCain is closer. Okay. Okay. But, he, but, what, he's still, then, but he's still a country mile away from where I want it to be. So because he's a country mile away from where you want it to be, you're going to vote for somebody who's even further away. Well, let me try to explain this yet please, again. Please do. And again, I'm not asking, uh, not expecting that you're going to embrace it. I just want to be as clear as I can. And the audience can make their own decisions, and a lot of them hate it, but so be it. Uh, I, I really do believe, and I apply the same standard to, for instance, city government, the exact same standard that I apply to Antonio Villaraigosa and the city council in Sacramento. I ask the question, what do you have to do to be fired around here? If you screw up, there should be consequences. And in my opinion, uh, the Republican Party that I have voted for my entire life, since my first vote cast in 1976, has just simply punted away any uh, actual commitment to the principles that they have spoken to. And I don't have to run the list down. You have the list. You know the list. But, 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 but Doug, so therefore you're going to vote for somebody who's even less close to the principles that you feel that the party in charge has not abided by. Yes, it Larry. makes no sense to me. Let me just finish, Doug. What would make sense would be uh, a pox on both their houses. I'm going to sit this one out. Uh, and when Obama screws up by taking the country to uh, an even uh, a further degree to the left uh, than, than it should go, uh, unemployment goes up, productivity goes down, people will get it. So I'm going to sit this out uh, and let them learn their lesson. I don't get somebody who says, uh, this guy is not pure enough. 
this guy is worse, so I'm going to vote for the guy who's worse because the guy who's not pure enough uh, offends me. Well, that, to I'm me, makes gonna, no sense. I will try one more time to explain it, and maybe you'll never understand it, but, you know, that's, uh, that's your business, not mine. I can't help it if you don't understand it. Uh, and you don't like it. Well, I can't but, help it if it doesn't make any sense, Doc. Uh, well, I will try to explain it one more time. Here's the reasoning. It's real simple. If you continue to vote for a Republican Party that pays lip service to its principles and then sells them out, they will continue to do that. And the only way the, Re the Republican Party became the Reagan Party by losing elections. They got better by losing elections. This is how we regenerate forest after forest fires. Ball clubs get better with draft picks, and parties improve by losing elections and learning lessons from them. To reward the party for nominating a John McCain, who is a personal hero, there's no question about that, but a guy whose fame largely comes from, from challenging his own party's basic conservative tenets, is to only reward the very thing that got the Republican Party into this and, and, and in order to punish the party, you're going to vote for somebody who wants to, A, turn his back on free trade. I, I assume you're a free trader. B, put the government even more involved in health care uh, than ever before. Uh, C, uh, raise taxes on people making a quarter of a million dollars to spread the wealth, raise capital gains taxes, raise dividends, uh, remove the payroll cap. Uh, in order to punish the party for not being sufficiently pure? Well, I, I don't get it. Well, Somebody's going to put on Supreme Court justices like Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, to uh, affirm things like the Kelo decision that we don't like, uh, to impose habeas corpus for enemy combatants who were picked up on the battlefield, to continue race-based preferences. Uh, and, and those justices, and, and this person will probably get anywhere from one, two, or three, uh, President Obama, will probably now have an impact on the Supreme Court for the next 25 or 30 years because John McCain is, sufficient, is insufficiently pure. Well, it doesn't make any sense to me, Doug. Well, I know it doesn't, Larry, but again, there's a high tide and a low tide. You don't just have one size fits all. And I do not believe that the country has a two-party system right now. And, uh, and the only way that we're going to have a two-party system is for the Republican Party to come back and mean something. Otherwise, we're going to get more of the same of what we got. We're going to get Harriet Meyer's nominations, and we're going to get prescription drug plans. Uh, we're going to get... Uh, 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 we're going to get a labor department that reclassifies hamburger flipping jobs as manufacturing jobs so they can boast about a growth in manufacturing. We're going to get nonsense. And I, and I know that you don't see it my way, Larry, but I don't see a devotion. I don't see how we're going to get better as a nation if we continue right. to elect Here, mediocrity. Here's why I'm suspicious and said last night and said it again today. Why sometimes, Doug, and I know you're going to be offended by this, I wonder whether or not you even believe in the principles that you talk about. For well, example, wait, 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 You've used the term Darwinian capitalism. That's correct. You once said about the higher prices for gases and the gas companies, I believe they're cheating, quote, I feel it in me bones, right. end of quote. That's Those correct. are the kinds of silly things that liberals think, say, Michael Moore th says, Sean Penn says. These are the kinds of people that don't believe in free markets. They believe in big government. They believe in regulation because if you truly believe in the free market principles that you talk about, what is a corporatist? What is Darwinian capitalism? What do those things mean? We have a heavily regulated con let regulated economy. We regulate against uh, theft and fraud, uh, which are the only things that we ought to be regulating against. Yet you talk about your opposition to what you call Darwinian, cap Darwinian capitalism. That's the kind of thing you hear on Air America. What does that mean? Well, uh, well, I can define it how please, I mean please, it. Please do. Uh, well, I, for instance, I think that, uh, well, I'll give you a perfect example. When you allow Walmart to essentially write trade policies with China, where they tell their uh, they tell their vendors, move your manufacturing to China or we won't purchase from you. And, uh, and uh, then, well, yeah, we, we benefit from a cheaper toaster oven. So, 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 you, so, so, so you want a law telling Walmart, uh, don't tell your vendors to cut their costs. Uh, that's unfair. Uh, I, I think we pay a price for it when we lose manufacturing in America. And uh, there was a time. Un when, unreal. Well, unreal. You know, well, listen, uh, Larry. Uh, unreal.